Thank you for joining us once again on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to talk about the economy. Now, oil prices rose Wednesday as OPEC and Russian-led allies prepared to announce a big cut in its output. Major oil producers led by Saudi Arabia and Russians are expected to announce a large cut in the output to probe up prices despite Western concern over energy field inflation. The 13-nation OPEC cartel and its 10 Russian allies are reportedly considering a reduction of up to 2 million barrels per day at a meeting in Vienna, uh, the biggest court since 2020. In a reminder of the global economic turmoil, uh, the World Trade Organization dramatically lowered its global trade forecast for 2023. Uh, we have Zaka Bala, an oil and gas analyst, joining us from Kaduna. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you. All right, then. I'd like to share your thoughts on this development. I mean, and what it means for an oil-dependent economy or, uh, you know, economies that are exporting oil. Uh, definitely, uh, we are expecting to see uh, a reduction in the production output. And the reason for that is to make sure they show up or they increase uh, the price of uh, crude oil in the international market. But even without doing that, I can tell you the price of the crude oil in the international market is still looking good because it's slightly below uh, $90 per barrel. We shouldn't forget that there was a time it was below even $30 per barrel. So as it is right now, it is still economically feasible for so many countries who will organize their activities to produce at what we call technically lower cost per food, you know, and will be able to, to do well. But, more, but most importantly, we need to understand that even without cutting the output, there will still be a request or requirement for higher energy. Because we are heading towards the winter, energy requirements will, will go up. We shouldn't also forget that there are so many countries that are still trying to recover from the tragedies of, of the pandemic. So there is this projection and plan to ramp up production. And if there is a need to ramp up production in terms of goods and services, there will be requirement for energy. And technically, you are talking about fossil fuel, either crude oil or gas in this context. But, but this is, is this good news for Nigeria? I mean, let's not forget that, you know, the projection or the quota that has been given to Nigeria, we're looking at one83 uh, zero million barrels per day and however for several reasons we have not been able to meet the quota I mean we're producing below what's expected about 900,000 now if OPEC reduces uh, the, the, the output and then we have a new allocation what exactly are we going to be doing really well when I was responding to you from the initial question I was trying to x-ray the oil and gas industry globally. And I was looking at the global strata of activities going on in the oil and gas industry. But Nigeria is a unique case. To be honest, if we want to talk about the context of Nigeria, Nigeria is not doing well. And let nobody be deceived the problems of Nigeria as far as the oil and gas industry is concerned are artificial problems. They are man-made problems and they are problems within Nigeria and they can be solved. But for other countries that are technically or reasonably organized, they are producing, they are meeting up with their open quota, those are the kind of countries that will benefit, whether they belong to the cartel of OPEC or the non-OPEC cartel, you know, led by Russia. 
in the context of Nigeria, we are experiencing what I can technically describe as business climate hostilities. And because of the hostilities, we cannot meet up with our OPEC quota. We cannot meet up with our internal production quota to even breach what we can technically describe as budget deficit. If we want to talk in the context of Nigeria, the picture is bleak, the picture is gloomy, and the picture is completely discouraging. All right. Uh, um, how how will this um, this this current uh, uh, production cut or uh, output cut by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries um, affect in you know the the local pump price in Nigeria? It's, it's, it, it will it's, not yeah. have because uh, any so, sorry. Just to add to that, that um, um, hearing that there's there's some scarcity expected in Abuja in the next few days. Um, is, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Over to you, sir. See, in the context of Nigeria, we were not already meeting up with the, with the quota. We don't have refineries that are functional. It is only Nigeria within this entire time of, of boom in production of crude oil and gas and the prices that has not been gaining or making any profit. But let me put a caveat here. When you talk to people probably in government or some agencies of government, they may be telling you and be talking about countries like Venezuela. They will say Venezuela too is going through problem. But Venezuela has a unique problem. I mean, everybody knows it. Venezuela has technical issues. They have serious political issues. And they have some confrontations with some superpowers. So anybody using Venezuela as an example is a very wrong example. But when you look at things from the context of Nigeria, all of you know that we have been having a power grid failures countlessly. And from that angle, we don't have electricity. If you do not have electricity, there will be no power. If there is no power, there will be no energy. If there is no energy, the strategic domestic sector, strategic industrial sectors, and strategic commercial sectors will not try. If they, they do not try, that means, I mean, there will be no profitability. If there is no profitability, then they will not be able to break even. And if they cannot break even, the company income tax will go down. Personal income tax will go down. And by extension, revenues to government will be affected and the GDP will be affected. That is just one direction. If you don't have internal crude production and refining, that means distillates, which we technically call refined products, will have to be imported. And that's why diesel is expensive. That's why aviation fuel is expensive. That's why kerosene is expensive. That's why cooking gas is expensive. Mm. Then the worst part, yeah. I don't even want to say the satanic part, had to do with the deregulation of prices. Some of us kicked against it before the passage of the petroleum industry bill. But we, nobody listened. But those who were praising at that time said, immediately you deregulate the prices, the prices will be competitive, investors will come in, they will invest, and prices will go down. Around that time, the price of diesel was around 80 naira per liter. The price has been deregulated now, and the price of diesel is now heading towards 800 naira per liter. Where are the investors? They have not come. Where are the investors? Are the prices coming down? We deregulated the price of aviation fuel. You can see what's happening in the aviation sector. One way flight from Lagos to Abuja is about uh, between 80 and 100,000 Nigerian Naira for economy uh, tickets. Where are the investors that are coming in? 
to build in additional refineries where are the investors that we were told will come so you could see from that angle that we were being lied to at a point we were told that it was because of smuggling but it has been proven that it is not correct the only product that is yet to be deregulated is petrol and i can tell you as we speak now a sachet of pure water is about 20 naira if you deregulate the price of petrol a sachet of, of water may, may get to like 50 or 70 naira so it's very clear that that deregulation was a dummy and a negative dummy that was sold to nigeria where are the derived benefits just imagine what would have happened if we hadn't deregulated the price of diesel and aviation fuel. Probably Nigeria will cease to exist. Because we are told that just because we have not deregulated uh, the price of PMS, that Nigeria is spending about 7 trillion naira, or will spend about that amount on subsidy on just petrol. Just imagine if we had not deregulated uh, the price of diesel and aviation fuel and kerosene. Does it mean Nigeria will be spending probably 20 trillion naira on subsidy? So do you expect... And when do you, you expect, talk like that, yeah, do you tells expect, you something is wrong with our economic managers, yes. call our political leaders. But, but uh, 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 Zaka Bala, do you expect any, any hiccup, any hitches in the form of probably scarcity in the coming days because of this um, increase in oil prices? Um, I will not be because surprised. Of, because of, of I will not be surprised because we are relying on imports. The best way to describe Nigeria is a country where you have beans. You produce so much beans, but anytime you want to buy or eat akara or moi moi, you will go and buy from somebody that does not even cultivate beans. One way to describe Nigeria is in the context of the crude oil production, gas and energy is you're talking about a farmer that produces so much cassava, but every time the person wants to take gari and drink, also gari and drink or eat eba, the person will go outside or go to somebody that does not cultivate cassava and buy gari or buy tapioca. Does that make sense? That's the co context of Nigeria. And let, let, us, let nobody feel we are either blasting our economic or political leaders because the whole world knows the truth. We are in the days of information. They know the truth. They know that that's the way the economy of Nigeria is zigzag and is heading towards the valley and will, I mean, towards the cliff and will collapse into the valley. So even if you are studio things, uh, what I'm saying doesn't make sense. I mean, the, the global community knows there is nothing you can hide these days. So um, in all of this, Dan, if there's going to be an oil price increase and uh, you already have the fact that OPEC is planning a cut, you know, in terms of the outputs, what's the interpretation of this? It, it, the simple interpretation is border doom for Nigeria. But it will not be doom for countries like Saudi Arabia. It will not be a doom for country for Iran. It will not be a doom for countries like uh, Iraq or Libya or other OPEC producing nations that have organized their economies in such a way that they have enough crude oil for their internal consumption and refining to make sure they distribute and take care of their citizens internally. What they may suffer may be a reduction in the revenues that they will generate because the production volumes will go down and the crude oil or gas that they will be exporting, the volume will come down and probably uh, the revenues coming Will, will be lower than what they will be getting. But already the crude oil that you produce for internal consumption has nothing to even do with OPEC quota. But in the case of Nigeria, the crude oil, first of all, we cannot meet up with the internal production or OPEC quota, and even the refined products are imported. 
Like I said, you, you have beans, you produce so much beans, but you go to somebody who does not cultivate beans to buy akara or moi moi. So it's, it's, it's bleak for, for, for Nigeria. But you have mentioned the issue of, you know, not having uh, refineries, the refineries that we have uh, producing or, I mean, refining effectively, I mean, performing, that would be the word now. Yes, but if, if, you, if you look at, but so if you also look at, you know, some of the excuses and reasons that have been given why we have not been able to meet up, you know, our production quota by OPEC, especially of recent time, is that you have the uh, oil thefts. If you look at the pipelines, uh, the fact that our pipelines have been vandalized and what have you, these issues also contribute to meeting our quota. I, I like us to begin to, you know, look at how we can get out of this situation. Is there really a short-term solution to getting out of all of this and ensuring that, you know, uh, we're on top of the situation? Excellent. God bless you for that question. Is crude oil test a problem in Saudi Arabia? Is crude oil test a problem in Libya? Is crude oil test a problem in Angola? Is it a problem in Gabon? Is it a, a problem in uh, Brazil? Is crude oil theft a problem in China? So who is fooling who? So if, 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 if all, all the other if OPEC and non-OPEC member countries, crude oil theft is not a, a, a problem. Why is it a problem in Nigeria? And one thing again is this. You need to understand that Nigerian oil and gas companies are suffering from business climate hostility. Why is it that there are countries that are not as big as Nigeria, they do not have the quantity of crude oil and gas reserves that we have in Nigeria, but there is no crude oil or gas test. Have we asked that problem? And let me tell you, if the crude oil and gas industry is suffering in a calamitous manner like this in Nigeria, is the health sector not suffering the same fate? Is the education sector doing well in Nigeria? Is the, uh, the road infrastructure doing well in Nigeria? Is the agricultural sector doing well in Nigeria? Is the situation in Nigeria better? So the Nigeria problem is a holistic, I don't want to use a demeaning phrase, but the Nigerian problem is, is a catastrophic problem that right. is internal. Do, do, uh, Zaki, we, 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 we have to call it a day uh, uh, that, I mean, you've painted a picture of doom and gloom. I know you're not a prophet of doom, you're just being realistic with what uh, the situation is. Uh, is there any hope? Can anything be done just in, in a sentence or two to at least re reduce the negative effect and impact on this, on it, the Nigerian it, economy? It, you are 100% correct. There, there is doom and gloom, and there is hope. But the hope will start by the leaders telling the truth. Because when the oil companies were running away, our leaders were telling us that those oil companies were leaving to to invest in renewable energy that we shouldn't bother and that they are going away will not have any effect. But we are seeing the, the, the negative effect. That's one thing. When things are not going well, leaders should feel bold to say it because the way children are to parents is the way citizens are to leaders. We are not saying our leaders must be perfect. There are no perfect leaders everywhere. But if things are not going well, let us accept them. If corruption is what is affecting the industry, let us discuss it. If it is security agents, if it is the communities, if it is the government agents, if it is the oil companies that have sabotaged to us, let us meet together and discuss as Nigerians and families okay. and find solutions. Okay. Zaka Bala, thank you so much. Uh, um, you said there is hope, but you've given us some of the things that need to be done. And, and I think the paramount thing you've said is our leaders should be truthful about the situation of things. Thank you so much, Zakabala. Uh, all and gas analysts who join us uh, via video link from Kaduna. We appreciate your time.
Thank you and congratulations to Nigeria again at 62. At Thank least you. we are still holding ourselves together and still moving together as one united country. Thank that you. on its own, that on on its own gives me hope. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, a thank great, you. great way for us to uh, end the conversation with you. We appreciate your time and uh, your analysis this morning. Well, that's the size of our conversation. We appreciate you. I mean, thank you for being part of this journey from 7 to 9, about 9 o'clock. Of course, at 9 o'clock, we'll join the newsroom for the news brief. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it will be fantastic and great to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, we are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Let's do this tomorrow. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Have yourself a wonderful day. Good morning.